Okay, so for the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Section O. Um, this is a nice, easy section, I believe. Um, part of the section we're going to review is, is actually not new, um, but we thought we might take an opportunity to go over it, the flu vaccine section, just because you're here and we're here, so let's do it. Okay. Okay, so for section L, we're going to go through the objectives. You know, by now you guys are pretty used to this is how we start them. So we're going to illustrate a working knowledge of this section. We're going to interpret some of the coding options for this new item, O0100. Uh, we're going to articulate the intent of section O, and we're going to apply those coding instructions. So O0100. I don't know why I trip on that, because there's all those O's and zeros, and so it, but it's actually O0100. Uh, special treatments, procedures, and programs is actually assessed on admission. Um, the existing O0250 is the influenza vaccine, and that's something we've been doing for a while, um, and that is assessed by discharge. So if you look on the, um, the 1.4 version um, ERF pie that's at your table, when you look for special treatments, procedures, programs, zero, uh, 00100, it's actually on <clears throat> page 11 <clears throat> because it's assessed on admission. But then when you go to the flu vaccine piece, it's towards the back because it's assessed by discharge, just so if you want to follow along. Okay, just so we don't lose it. So the intent is to identify any special procedures. In this instance, we're talking about total parenteral nutrition and flu vaccines. So we'll start with TPN. So folks who um, uh, are on TPN uh, can be infected and, and, or can affect the patient's ability to perform um, activities while at the earth. Um, you know, I don't know if you see a lot of TPN in your facilities or not. Um, we, don't, we don't see a ton of it, but every now and then we do. Um, and it is, you know, a patient who is uh, fairly ill or impaired, and that's why they're on the TPN. And I just remind people when we're talking about TPN, I know this is a room full of people who are in the know, but TPN is very different than enteral nutrition, you know, for non-nursing people. Total parenteral nutrition is an intravenous form of feeding. Uh, enteral is for tube feeds. So we're talking about parenteral. So steps for assessment for this item, we're going to review the patient's medical record and determine whether this uh, TPN is um, present on admission. Um, you're going to complete it only on admission, and you're just going to check the box if they, are on, if they do have it ordered, and it is part of their plan. Okay? If it is not part of their plan, you don't have to do anything to it, and you don't have to put anything in the box at all. It's one of the few items that you can actually leave blank. Okay? So let's do a coding scenario. We'll do this one together. It's pretty straightforward. Mrs. C had a stroke following bowel surgery and has been unable to eat or ingest adequate nutrition since her bowel surgery. She receives TPN using a peripherally inserted central catheter or a PIC line that infuses her nutrients 24 hours a day. How would you code O0100? You put the check. Very good. So you would put the check there. Okay, so this item is it's new, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, I think uh, for any of the PPS people in the room, it'll be easy to to assess and to um, determine the patient has it. Okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to flu vaccine. <clears throat> now, if I could just for a second get a show of hands for the people in the room who actually complete the earth pie. How many people in this room actually do it? Okay. All right, good. So we have a large number of people who actually perform the earth pie. So for some of you who um, are here because you're interested in the information for training purposes for later or for implementation, some of this information may seem new to you, but it's, it's what we've been doing, uh, those of us who complete it um, pretty regularly for some time now. 
Uh, this is the item set as it looks on the current and will look on the 1.4. And the reason we collect this information, um, you know, why, why are we interested in finding out whether our patients are vaccinated or not? And what we know is that the CDC continues to recommend that uh, folks get vaccinated, especially people um, age six months and older, um, because when infected with the influenza vaccine, patients are at very high risk. Uh, for uh, additional complications and more likely uh, than ge the general population to re require hospitalization. So if anybody, has anybody ever had the flu? Yeah, yeah, a couple years ago, I can't believe it. You know, I'm a nurse, I, I'm one of five, five kids and um, I'm the only one who lives in the same state as my mother who was, you heard about, she's uh, 82 years old. And one year, she did not get her flu shot. And you know, I'm embarrassed to say, I didn't know she didn't get it, she always gets it. Um, but she, she uh, is very independent, and one morning I get a call at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, she knows I get up early. I, I, get up, I like to get up that early. So she calls me and just says, do you think you could come down to the beach? I don't think I'm feeling well. I think I have to go to the hospital. You know, I was like, what? You know, she, I didn't want to wake you, so I waited till 4.30. <laughs> So, I, you know, I go driving down the beach, it's, you know, 55 minutes away, and I go tearing in there, and isn't she flat out on the couch, like, horrible with the flu, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what's going on, you know, and she said, I'm so embarrassed, I didn't want to say anything, but I, you know, I was going to go to the pharmacy and get it there, and then I was going to go, and so-and-so, you know, needed to get a ride to the foot doctor, or I, and I volunteer over here, and these people needed communion, so I just never got it. <laughs> so, and I have to say, it was such a lesson to me as a healthcare provider and as, a, as an adult daughter, because this was December 23rd I got the call, and she was out, out of commission for a month, literally a month. She didn't have to get hospitalized. We got her, met, you know, the Tamiflu or whatever. but. She missed Christmas with all of my kids and my nieces and nephews who were, were away in college, and they didn't see her real often around that time period. So while her situation seems very benign, it was just, you know, illness, and, you know, she and I spent Christmas together in her little house, or, but it really Im impacted so many other people in a, in a way that, you know, you don't think about. You know, all my kids didn't get to see their grandmother for the whole month during semester break. Um, so it's important. Anyways, I digress. So um, an influenza uh, outbreak can result in up to 60% of the population becoming ill. What we know is that 25% of those people can actually develop pretty significant complications, and we've seen that. Um, and mortality rates, you know, result from pneumonia and other, other problems. So the influenza vaccination season, if you look at this slide, and you can do the math, is from July 1st to June 30th. So that's all year. Yeah, yeah. So, so the, the influenza season is actually all year long. What we define as the influenza vaccination season is typically October 1st through March of the following year. And that that's when we're going to want to make sure that our patients are being vaccinated. But interestingly enough, the, the flu season is actually all year long. So um, inpatient rehab hospitals, just like other hospitals and other healthcare um, uh, providers, are encouraged to um, document when a patient's been vaccinated. Um, and uh, the vaccine is usually available beginning in September and generally does not expire until late spring. Um, and for the quality measure, uh, the records of patients in the year one or more days during the influenza vaccination season are included in that calculation. And just so you know, I, I learned this by um, uh, meeting up with my new friends in the back there. Um, is that um, the measure really is the completion of the item. You know, it's not necessarily you're being um, graded, for lack of a better word, on, on the fact that you gave the flu vaccine or not. It's really completing the item. Of course, we all know it's hugely important that we do give the vaccine, though. So you're going to want to, how do we, how do we 
determine whether a patient has had the flu vaccine or not. And I don't know about you guys, but for us up in Connecticut, you know, when you start off in October, very few of the patients coming from acute care have actually received the vaccine. But as we move further down through the months, you know, we start admitting patients in February, we're seeing a lot more people that have already received it, either through their doctors, uh, pharmacy, or at the hospital. So in the beginning, we pay particular attention. Um, what we do at our facility, again, is we, um, we, we ask our pre-admission nurses to try to find some of this information out ahead if they can. We're part of a large health system, and we do have an electronic medical record that goes from facility to facility. And just recently, our uh, physicians uh, associated with the hospital have gone with the same electronic me medical record. Oh my gosh, that's the best thing ever, you know, because now we can really track. So we try, we start there um, for our assessment. And we don't want to hold up an admission. Nobody wants to hold up an admission. Um, so if they, they can't find out that information by the time they come, then we move it on to the next phase, and that will be our nurses and our case managers and other health professionals that work in the ERF. Um, if the patient's influenza vaccination status is unknown, we go to the next step and we'll certainly, we ask um, uh, responsible parties and, and different folks, uh, primary care physicians, and we do this, we actually call them. And one of the things um, that I'm particularly proud of that we do um, is that if we find out a patient did get the vaccine at say the pharmacy or whatever, we enter it into our electronic medical record under immunizations with the date that we've obtained from the primary care physician so that the next level of care and the next practitioner doesn't have to do all that we had to do to find out about it. And it then starts to travel with the patient the way you know, true electronic medical records are supposed to be. So um, we, we work really hard at that. Um, if a vaccination status cannot be determined, you're gonna proceed to um, coding 0250A in order to determine whether to administer the vaccination or not. So this all looks familiar, right, to all you guys who do this all the time? So there's actually three steps or three pieces to this um, assessment. It's um, O250OA, O250OB, and O250OC. And it really turns out that you pretty much only have to answer two of the three depending upon how you answer the first question. So the first part is whether the patient um, received a vaccine for the current influenza season in the facility, your facility, yes or no. Um, if the answer is yes, then they're looking for a date that it was received. Um, and if the answer was no to A, then why not? And we'll go through that a little bit. So you're going to code no for A if the patient did not receive the vaccination in your facility and you're gonna code one if the patient did. You're gonna enter the date that the vaccine was received in your ERF, and you're not gonna leave any blank boxes. So when we're looking for a date, we wanna make sure you, you know, if it's February 2nd, it's 0202. Um, if the date is unknown or information is not available, a single dash needs to be entered in the first box. We've been working on the project for a couple of months now, and this has been haunting me. I can't come up with a, cir a circumstance where you would need to enter a dash. So hopefully you won't, um, and because we're not encouraging you to do that. But if you've given the vaccine in your facility, I'm thinking you know the date. And you should be able to trace that, whether on your med, you know, your med administration or something. So I can't think of a date, if anybody can. Um, let me know, but uh, if for some reason you couldn't, you can put a dash there. Uh, code a reason the vaccine was not administered in the facility, um, and that is a question that they ask when you answer the question no. Just some information about um, if you, you know, we're not currently in the, well, yeah, we are currently in the influenza season. We're not in the vaccination season. Um, but the CDC website um, is a great place to um, go for any questions you have and just gather some information. It's a great, it's a great website. So let's do a coding scenario for uh, O0250. So Mrs. J received the influenza vaccine in the earth during this year's influenza vaccination season. 
on October 2nd, 2016. How would you code this item? So 0025OA is a yes or no? Yes, correct. And then we would enter the date and we would make sure we used the right zeros we needed. So 1002, 2016. And then we can skip C because we don't have to give a reason we didn't give it, because we did. So she received it on that day. Pretty straightforward. Here's one that's a little tricky because it wouldn't be fun unless we tried to trick you. So Mrs. A received the influenza vaccine in the earth on February 5th, 2016 during this year's influenza vaccination season. The patient was transferred to an acute care facility on February 10th because of a medical emergency. That happens, sometimes we have to do that. Um, the patient was then readmitted to the same earth on February 20th. The patient did not receive the influenza vaccine during the second earth stay because she had already received it. The patient was discharged home on March 1st. How would you code Mrs. A's first and second stay? And I almost feel like I gotta do this. Okay, so the, here's the coding. So for the first day when the patient was with you, February 5th to February 10th, you did give the vaccine. You gave the vaccine in your facility and you gave it on February 5th, 2016. When the patient was readmitted to your facility on February 20th and the question was, has the patient received the vaccine in your facility? The answer is yes, How, right? Because you did give it. So the answer for those two would be the same. Okay, let's do another one. Mr. N was offered the influenza vaccine during the ERF hospitalization beginning um, in February 2016. Mr. N refused the vaccine, asserting that whenever he received it in the past, it always gave him the flu. We do have patients who feel this way and have had, had issues with it. Despite the staff providing education on the vaccine that it does not cause the flu, Mr. N still refused to take it. How are we going to code this item? So we did not give the vaccine, so for 0025OA is no. We're gonna skip 0250B, correct, right? And then we're gonna enter a reason that we did not give it and that is because we did offer it to him, but he declined it, okay? You guys are all nodding, so none of this is anything you're not comfortable with, that's great. And it is a review, um, we just thought we'd take the opportunity. Okay, so for section O in summary, TPN is collected on admission, that is something that's new to you, it's a check box, um, and it's in the, the earlier part of the earth pie talking about the admission items. The influenza vaccine is assessed by discharge, so you're gonna to wanna to be able to complete that by discharge. Um, there's no changes to that section, it's just we thought it would be a good opportunity to review. And there are three sections to it of which you complete two of the three depending upon your answer for the first. Right, everybody good with that? Okay, so as far as your action plans go, you know, this is a pretty straightforward one. Um, you're going to want to just review your process and identify any areas of improvement. After reviewing um, what we've talked about with the vaccine, is there anything taking it back to your facility that you might want to do differently or change? Um, uh, do you provide staff education prior to flu season? You know, we do that in our facility now. Um, because uh, we don't offer the vaccine during those odd months, so we wanna make sure everybody's up to speed, so we do a little bit of training right before vaccination season. Um, we also make sure that there's no staff bias regarding the vaccine, you know, that, that staff don't have personal opinions that they uh, project um, to their patients. Um, do you have a process in which the vaccine information can clearly be communicated to the next level of care, because that really is the goal? 
We want to make sure it goes from one agency to another, from one practitioner to another, so that patients don't get multiple vaccines. Um, and are you maximizing your electronic medical record um, whenever possible? There we go. Questions or concerns about this section that I can help you with? Yeah, this is a nice one, right? Yeah, a good one to have right before lunch. Well, I thank you. This is the last time we're going to be speaking, so I thank you so much for your patience and your kindness. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank you.